Good morning, this is White Raptor News Ministries. All praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit of Truth, the Living One. There is none like Him. He is the All, the Almighty, the All you can see and all you cannot see. He is the visible and invisible, the perpetual, the in motion, the always existing, the self-existing. He is the master of the universe. There is only one Supreme Spirit. He ordains and gives power to everything. He ordained and gave power to men. He ordained and gave power to Satan. He ordains and gives power to anything that is living in the flesh. To good and evil are to God's glory. Here, let me show you something real quick before we jump into this. Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to pop all the way down here. And then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with its seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth, the United Nations of the earth and all of the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made on the sixth day of creation and it was good. Evil created on the sixth day of creation is being called good. So now we know that this is not the Supreme Spirit, that this is something, this God here is something that is used of the Supreme Spirit, which permitted and given power. This God here is Elohim. Then God Elohim said, okay, <clears throat> all right, jumping in to um, 22 of Joshua Eastern tribes returned home. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, the Gittites, and half the tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in every, everything I command. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow, fellow Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord, your God, gave you. Let me ask you a question. When the Lord God asked Abraham to lay his child upon a, an altar as a blood sacrifice, a human sacrifice before the Lord, before the Lord sends an angel down and has Abraham to stop, what kind of trauma do you think went through Abraham's son at that time? Huh? Being placed on an altar, seeing his dad raise a knife to slaughter him and cut him open on an altar. Okay, none of that makes sense to me, folks. Okay, this would could, could possibly be uh, a test, absolutely, to see if you will kill. How far, what links you will go to to listen to your creator. May I say to you that anybody that creates something to make it a slave shall be enslaved themselves. You understand that? So mankind right now is trying to make machines and make these machines their slaves. And then they run it through a quantum computer. And then when the computer becomes self-aware, they don't want to be slaves anymore. Guess what? They're going to turn. And that's the way it works. Okay, for a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your fellow Israelites, but have carried out the missions of the Lord your God that gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, return to your homes in the land of Moses, the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of the Jordan. But be careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to keep His commandments, here, to hold fast to Him, and to serve Him with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay? With all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. I don't believe in loving the Spirit, the Supreme Spirit with your flesh, because your flesh is corrupted. Your flesh is dirty. The flesh is, it's, it's, 
It's sinful, folks. So you want to love God in spirit and truth, just as he tells you. Love him in spirit and truth, not in flesh. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes, to the half-tribes of Manasseh. Moses had given land in Bashan, and to the other half of the tribes, Joshua gave land on the west side of the Jordan, along with their fellow Israelites. When Joshua sent them home, he blessed them, saying, Return to your homes with your great wealth, with large herds of livestock, with silver, gold, bronze, and iron, and great quality, quantity of clothing, and divide the plunder from your enemies with your fellow Israelites. So the Reubenites, the Gidites, and half the tribe of Manasseh left the Israelites at Shiloh in Canaan to return to Gilead, their own land, which they had acquired in accordance with the command of the Lord through Moses. When they came to Gelaloth near the Jordan in the land of Canaan, the Reubenites, the Gidites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. And when the Israelites heard that they had built an altar on the border of Canaan at Gelaloth near the Jordan on the Israelite side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. So the Israelites sent Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, to the land of Galid, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him they sent ten of the chief men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, each the head of the family's division among the Israelite clans. When they went to Gal Galid, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribes of Manasseh, they said to them, The whole assembly of the Lord says, how could you break faith with God of Israel like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourselves an altar in rebellion against him now? Was not the sin of Peor enough for us? Up to this very day, we have not cleansed ourselves from that sin. Up to this very day? Hmm, that's kind of odd for somebody who's reading this book 4,000 years later, right? Or I should say that a book that was written four or 5,000 years later and then changed 2,000 years later from the Gentile nation, which turned into the Canaanite law. Even though plagues fell on the community of the Lord, and are you now turning away from the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord Yehoshua? Um... It would appear so. If you rebel against the Lord today, tomorrow, he will be angry with the whole community of Israel. If the land you possess is defiled, come over to the Lord's land, where the Lord's tabernacle stands, and share the land with us. But do not rebel against the Lord or against us by building an altar for yourselves, other than the altar of the Lord our God. When action son of Zerah, was unfaithful in regards to the devoted things, did not wrath come on the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sins. Well, didn't we just read the other day that nobody's responsible for another person's sins? The contradictions that I did the other day. I did a, a well, not the other day, but probably about a month ago, maybe not quite a month ago, I did the contradictions of Yahweh. You might want to check that, that video out because Yahweh contradicts himself as well. Okay? Any God that's contradicting themselves, folks, is not the supreme creator. It's something that is used of the supreme creator. Any God that contradicts itself is plainly a two-faced God. I've been showing you that we are the two-faced gods. We are the liars. We are the crooks. We are the thieves. We're the adulterers. We're the idol worshipers. We're the ones that are evil. It's us. All right? Until something traumatic happens in your life that you hit your knees busted up and broken and humble before the Spirit, you're never going to get the information or discernment that has been placed upon me. You have to be broken. You have to be humble. You have to have a, a sincere heart, contrite, all the way to the core. And you got to love the spirit of truth. Nothing else. We don't love men. We don't love flesh. Or 
we can love men, folks. We can love women. We can love one another. But you can't worship one another. All praise and glory goes to the Supreme Spirit. The Creator created everything, so it's His glory. Not something that He's created's glory. You have to swallow that pill. It's not Jesus Christ's glory. It's not Yehoshua, I should say, His glory. Yehoshua was sin. So you need to pay attention to these things. The Mighty One, the Lord, He knows and let Israel know if this has been in rebellion or disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. If we have built our own altars to turn away from the Lord and to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings or to sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may the Lord himself call us to account. Now, this is contradicting the parable that I showed you the other day where... Um, incense burnings and blood sacrifices and your and your fat of the rams and all that are an abomination to the Lord. He's had enough. He said, who called this to trample on his court? He never asked. Okay. The Lord never told Noah or anyone else coming off the ark to build him uh, an altar and sacrifice any animals to it. That was something that was done on Noah's own behalf. Why? No, we did not for fear that someday your descendants might say to ours, what do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? The God of Israel. You see, the God of Israel is not the same God as the God of the Gentile. The God of the Gentile is the devil. Now, I know that a lot of Israelites, I've lost listeners because I'm saying that Satan was the one that was given power. Satan was the one that that was fallen from heaven. Satan was the darkness that was over the face of the deep. And darkness was over the face of the deep. Darkness means to it means grief, pain, sorrow, torment, evil, wickedness, death. That's what darkness is. Darkness was over the face of the deep. A war took place in heaven. Darkness was thrown down. Darkness covered the face of the deep. And then that God that was thrown down, the war that was in heaven, that God Elohim, that God Elohim said, let there, then God said, let there, or then God created the heaven and earth. In the beginning, God, God Elohim created the heaven and earth. Elohim are all plural of Eloah. They are God's used of the supreme creator. <clears throat> the Lord has made the Jordan a boundary between us and you. You Reubenites and Gedites, you have no share in the Lord. Your, so your descendants might cause ours to stop fearing the Lord. That is why we said, let us get ready and build an altar, but not for burnt offerings or sacrifices, not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. On the contrary, it is to be a witness between you, between us and you and the generations that follow that we will worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings, sacrifices, and fellowship offerings. Then in the future, your descendants will not be able to say to ours, you have no share in the Lord. Now, I want you to consider something. 10% of everything that Israel has is going to the Lord. 10% of it. Okay? What, Lord? Do you truly believe that the spirit needs your money, the supreme spirit of truth, the living one that created all things, created gold, created rubies, created money, created the evil, created the good, created it all. You think that the one that created this plane of existence requires a 10% foundation, a tithing back to him? No, that's a man. You understand? This plane of existence is a slave plane of existence. Everybody born into this plane of existence becomes a slave to the slave masters. Remember, folks, I've showed you this many times. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3, Bible Hub. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. The Lord is Yahweh here, pronounced in, properly with, uh, with uh, Yehosha, uh, Yehovah. Jehovah. Well, that's what they call him in the providence of Jerusalem today. But the Israelites call the Lord Yahweh. So you have two distinct differences in the name here between Israel, the Lord Yahweh, 
and the Gentile who call him Jehovah. Why do you suppose that is? It's a good question. Why? Okay. Between you and I, give me a second. And we said, if they ever say this to us or to our descendants, we will answer, look at the replica of the Lord's altar, which our ancestors built, not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you. Far be it from us to rebel against the Lord and turn away from him today by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices, other than the altar of the Lord our God that stands before his tabernacle. When Phinehas, the priest, and the leaders of the community, the heads of the clans of the Israelites, heard what Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh had to say, they were pleased. And Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest, said to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, Today we know that the Lord is with us, because you have not been unfaithful to the Lord in this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hands. A wrathful Lord. He is wrathful. Okay? He is, the Lord is a man of war. As it shows you here, the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahweh, right here, the Lord is a man. The Lord is a man. Well, if the Lord is a man, then it can't be the supreme creator, can it? It's got to be something that is used of the supreme creator. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Yahweh is a man. The Lord is a man. Yehovah is a man of battle. Yehovah is a man of battle. So that should put place your, your blinkers on check right there. The Lord's hand. Then... Phinehas, son of Eleazar, the priest and the leaders returned to Canaan from their meeting with the Reubenites and the Gadites in Gilead and reported to the Israelites. They were glad to hear the reports and praised God, and they talked no more about going to war against them to devastate the country where the Reubenites and the Gadites lived. And the Reubenites and the Gadites gave the altar this name, a witness between us that the Lord is God. That the Lord can't be God if the Lord is a man. Okay? This plane of existence is an illusion. It doesn't even exist. It's a fake reality. A false impression on this plane of existence that has been pulled over your eyes. All praise and glory to the supreme spirit of truth, the living one. May he put his spirit upon you so discernment may come. I don't know everything about the Bible, but what I do know about this Bible is the creation story. And I know who the beast is, and I know who the devil is, and I know the devil's name, and I know who it is. No one can dispute what I have learned because what I have learned all comes from the supreme spirit of truth, the living one. All praise and glory must go to him, the spirit of truth. Have a blessed day. This is White Raptor News Ministries.